my name is Nicola Smart from the University of Oxford. I'm one of the scientists of tomorrow and I'm here at the uh, ESC Congress in London. And with me is uh, Dr. Francesco Panenni. Francesco was winner of last year's uh, Young Investigator Award in Basic Science. Uh, welcome Francesco and many Thank congratulations you. on your achievement last Thank year. You very much. Um, I, I wonder if you could start by telling us a little about the study you performed. Uh, what was the rationale for it? Yeah, sure. So basically the rationale of this study was rely on the notion that diabetes is actually, uh, the prevalence of diabetes is alarmingly increasing worldwide. So nowadays we face roughly more than 300 million of people affected by the disease. And most importantly, in 2035, we will expect to see roughly 600 million affected by either type 1 and type 2 diabetes worldwide. So this is actually as measuring progression for cardiovascular disease because we know that diabetes and cardiovascular disease are strongly interconnected. So patients with diabetes, they do carry a very high risk of myocardial infarction, stroke, cardiovascular death, and that's why I think it's key to understand the mechanism which drive the disease and diabetic vascular complication. So our efforts uh, were mostly uh, directed to, to appraise which were the molecular uh, drivers which can, um, understand, which can then uh, be responsible for the progression of diabetic vascular complications. So uh, we focused in uh, this study, that was the study I showed in this uh, award session last year, we showed that uh, uh, prolyl isomerase 1, known as PIN1 as an acronym, has uh, played a key role in the vessel wall of uh, diabetic mice. So we had experimental findings suggesting that PIN1 is highly activated in diabetic vessels and drives the activation and the phosphorylation, the isomerization of key proteins involving oxidative stress and inflammation. So we show that uh, PIN1 is able to isomerize some molecular targets like mitochondrial adapter P66, thus favoring mitochondrial translocation and oxidative burst. Then we show that uh, PIN1 seems to be crucial for vascular inflammation via NF-kappa-B signaling because it triggers the nuclear translocation of the factor thus leading to overexpression of inflammatory molecules and transcriptional programs. And also, PIN seems to, be, seems to inhibit strongly the ENOS because it triggers the interaction between ENOS and Kavalin-1, which is a quite detrimental event because then push the ENOS a bit out of the cells to the uh, membrane. And so ENOS is not able anymore to release, uh, to produce nitric oxide. So uh, we show this in mice with diabetes. And, and, and what, do you, what do you learn from that that you can apply to what you know in the, in the human condition? Yeah, what we learn is that uh, um, yeah, there was a potential, you know, because uh, we studied uh, PIN1 knockout mice and we showed that without PIN1 this mice seems to be protected against endothelial dysfunction, against vascular inflammation when diabetes is present. So based on this background we try to translate uh, to extend our findings to patients with uh, type 2 diabetes, uh, try to investigate whether it was possible actually to observe a similar phenomenon in patients. And uh, we recruited patients with type 2 diabetes and in, we collected peripheral blood monocytes because this was our window on the disease, mm. because it was difficult to get you know, vascular tissues from these patients. And then we investigated just P1 expression and activity. We found that uh, these parameters were very high in patients with diabetes as compared to controls. And then we could also show that this PIN1 activity correlates with vascular inflammation, with the soluble inflammatory adhesion molecules, and also with oxidative burst as measured by urinary isoprostein levels, which is a reliable mm -hmm. marker. Mm -hmm. So we have a kind of a snapshot in patients. It's not a mechanistic uh, a snapshot yet in patients, but we could show that uh, uh, PIN1 seems to be relevant in humans as well. Sure, so you've identified a pathway that probably pays, plays a role in the patients and one that may be potentially targeted in future for uh, therapy and for treating those patients. Yes, that's the uh, possible perspective because in mice we could target specifically PIN1 and show that you can rescue the phenotype. In patients we couldn't do it yet, but I think a next step would Small be yes, yeah, yes, to work yes. maybe ex vivo in human cells like isolated from patients with diabetes and try to see whether targeting PIN1 may rescue the phenotype. Of course, of course. It's a very exciting study and thank you for sharing it with us today. Welcome.